Rub up your engines! We got a Corolla, 180 something thousand miles. Still gets like 40 miles a gallon on the highway. But it's his daughter's car and he wants to see what does he need to fix and what can he live with. So, now he's worried about noises, maybe the axle, so we'll jack it up. And of course we don't want it rolling, so we'll make sure. Oh, uh, that's super tight. And as we crawl under, handy dandy little flashlight. Boop, that boot's not ripped. We'll look at the inside boot. It's dry as a bone too, the inside one. You're always gonna get superficial rust, especially up north. See all the eight frame rusts and stuff. The frame itself is good, but all the bare steel stuff will get superficial rust on it up north. If you look under here, the bit of the undercover's missing, you can see it's got a replacement bumper on it, so at some point it was whacked in the front, but these things can take a lot of abuse and still go down the road. So now we'll go to the other side. We'll check that one out. That boot's clean. As we look inside, that boot's clean. So there's nothing wrong with the axles. Now it's got a tiny bit of oil that's coming down here. So we'll look under the hood. Four cylinder dual VVTI. And as you can see, 2010. And it's 1.8. It's practically the same engine. It's in my wife's Matrix. It's a 2007 1.8 VVTI. These things can run for and now you can see he's had the oil pressure sending unit change. Sometimes the light comes on. And you can see it's kind of oily around there. Now the person that they bought the car from did that. And I can see it's probably cheap aftermarket Chinese made one. I'd say change that out. That seems to be where the drip's coming from. <laughs> so don't buy cheap Chinese crap because it'll bite you in the rear end. In this case it hasn't really done any damage but you can see the drip just bolts on and off. Simple to do. Now he doesn't like the blower motor noise so Start up. Turn the blower motor on. Yes, it is pretty loud. Now, what happens to these things as they age, the motors just get somewhat worn. Now, as we go between fresh and reser, now we're on reser. And then we'll go back to fresh from outside. You notice there wasn't any difference in noise. So that pretty much proves it's just an old worn blower motor. Because if you go fresh to recirc back and forth and you got another problem like let's say there was a restriction on the intake, well the recirc is going to make a different noise than the fresh. And the noise stayed exactly the same. And even then if you put it on just two it still blows and most of the noise is gone then. So. <laughs> Not something I'd really worry about. Got 180,000 miles on it. Okay, it doesn't burn oil. It gets 40 miles a gallon on the highway. And that's with an automatic transmission. So other than that, it doesn't have any complaints. Let's hook up our machine, see what it says about what kind of shape it's in. Now being an older car, it has a CD player, but look at this. He doesn't use a CD player anymore. He uses it to hold his phone. A little holder that goes in there. <laughs> Nobody uses CDs anymore. A luxury Corolla. It's got sunroof on it. Diagnostics. Doesn't have a smart key. I like that. I don't want all that crap. Knows it's a Corolla. 2010 without smart key. We'll do a diagnosis, auto scan. Old car, but it's only got one code and the EMPS. That's the electronic power steering. This has electronic power steering on it. Look at trouble codes. Lost communication with the computer. That often happens. Batteries replaced, all kinds of stuff. So, what we're going to do, we're going to erase the code. Then we're going to start it back up. Look at some live data. Let's we'll see what kind of shape this baby's in. Alternator's charging fine. 13.6. AC still blows freezing cold. I need it. It's getting hot. Shark tomb fuel trim. We'll turn the AC off for this because if you have AC on, that often will mess with your fuel trim. See, it's like 2.3, 3.9. So, it's adding a little fuel. It's making a little bit lean. And you'll often see these things run a little bit lean as they age. You can run some fuel cleaner through the system like my friend Bernie's ATS cleaner. It works really good for cleaning them. But on the other hand, this thing still gets about 40 miles a gallon. You would rather have a car run a little bit lean and get better gas mileage. I have fixed ones where people said, I want it to be, I don't want it to be lean anymore. Clean it all, get it going, and their gas mileage goes down. So if you're getting 40 miles a gallon, don't worry about it running a little bit lean. Flows around two, which is normal. Air fuel ratio is pretty close. One is perfect. 0 0.997, 999, there's one. Pretty close to perfect. Electronically controlled four speed transmission still works good, has no code. Hey, misfire is complete. 
There's no misfires. System's still working perfectly. The injectors are stable. Engine speed of all four cylinders are exactly the same. Zero misfires for all the cylinders. So let's take it for a spin. Okay, check it out. 180,000 miles. Still idles like a dream. Even with the AC on. But yeah, it's a Toyota Corolla. And this is Rhode Island roads. Yeah, you're going to feel the bumps. Fine when you're on a smooth road. But I mean, hey. Even when it was new, you're gonna feel the bumps in one of these things. And this baby's still got the original strut still on it. So here we go. No one's coming. We'll step on the gas hand. Smooth shift. Still got plenty of power. We're going 45 fast enough. And what do I hear? Nothing. I don't hear wheel bearings that are worn out. I don't hear groaning stuff. These things are vehicles you can drive forever. He got it for his daughter, and hey, they've only driven it like six, seven thousand miles since they bought it, but they haven't had to do anything to it either. Cold AC, still fun to drive. They corner quite well. You know, you get in a Corolla, it's going to get you where you're going. It's not going to break down, and it's going to get good gas mileage. He got it for his daughter, and it was a good pick. And after analyzing it all, oh, yeah, it runs a little bit lean. Well, you get better gas mileage, so who cares? It still runs perfectly fine down the road. No check engine lights on. Only thing I can see wrong is the silver backing on the mirror is wearing out, which is typical on Toyotas. For some reason, they're no good at putting that silver backing, and it often wears off especially in humid areas. Heck, maybe Toyota made the mirror in my master bathroom because the silvering's coming off on the edge of that too. <laughs> and if they don't like the humming noise, hey, you can buy the motor with the squirrel cage. If you want to get rid of that noise, buy a motor squirrel cage assembly. Don't just buy the motor and use the old squirrel cage over because often the squirrel cages are plastic and they will warp over time. Then they'll make that noise. You put a new motor in it, might still make the noise. It works fine. so. If you don't like the noise, change the squirrel cage and the motor. So there you have it, the perfect car for someone's daughter to drive around in. They got airbags in them, they're safe, but it gets good gas mileage. Sure, it's got 180,000 miles on it. I've seen them with 300, 480,000 miles on them. You find something like this, it's a great run around car that you can drive a really long time because it's got the 1.8 liter engine. Those engines can run forever. I don't know why Toyota doesn't just make them. But some people whine they don't have enough power, blah, blah, blah. Hey, it's got plenty enough power to get a little car like that around, get 40 miles a gallon on the highway, hardly ever break down, and still have freezing cold AC. It runs! And after all, this is the LE version. Well, it used to mean luxury edition, but letters aren't what they mean anymore. Most things all talk and no action. But it's a very reliable car. Can get you where you're going, run a long time. You don't have to throw money into it. They're cheaper to insure because they have smaller engines. And as you saw when I drove it hard, that transmission still shifts like a dream. Toyota engineers knew what they were doing when they built these things. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Shortcut Detour says, question, I got a 23 Chevy Trailblazer, a wheel drive, nine speed automatic, no CVT. So far it's been incredible. What would be the biggest thing I should look out for is ages. Okay, well it's 2023 now, so it's a new vehicle. <laughs> the transmissions are what always have had problems in those things, and that's a very complex nine speed. So I would religiously change the filter and fluid every 40,000 miles on that thing to make it last as long as possible. It might be good, you know, they're new ones. Maybe they're making them better than they used to. Because they had a lot of problems when they first came out with those nine speeds. So, can you want to baby that transmission, change the filter and fluid every 40,000 miles. If you want it to last as long as it possibly can. Gabe says, I got a 95 Lexus SC400. It stumbles and a misfire at only a 1200 RPM. Already did plugs, wires, fuel pump. Any I. Diaz. Here's the thing. You don't want to guess about you think it feels like a misfire, right? Get a guy like me, hook up his fancy scan tool and analyze. Unfortunately for you, and a lot of those, believe it or not, the main computers went out. It's very rare for a Toyota or a Lexus to have a bad main computer. The ECM, the electronic control module, it's very rare. But on those, it happens all the time. And the ones that I fixed are doing exactly what yours did. At a certain RPM, they do it. Now, it could be lots of things. Head gaskets starting to blow, all kinds of stuff. But have a guy like me hook it up, his fancy scan tool, analyze it. And if he says, yep, it's in the computer, you're going to have to replace the computer. That particular model, that particular year, is the only one I ever really see have problems with their main computers going bad. But that one did. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!